Hi, I'm Mary Reese from NJPSN FEA, and I'm really happy to welcome to our annual fall conference Dr. Yong Zhao from um, University of Oregon. He just completed our keynote, and I wanted to follow up with a couple points that he mentioned. Um, first of all, uh, with our uh, society filled with technology, automation, um, innovation, um, he mentioned that our educational system is continually playing catch up to uh, this new redefined society. So I'd like him to uh, talk more about that for our audience. Great, uh, happy to do that. Do you have a specific question, or do you want me to? No, just continue to the, yeah. the concept that you uh, sure. brought forth. Yeah. In your work. Well, I mean, it's, it's very simple. I think our schools have been defined, designed, which was trying to do this uh, to prepare students to find jobs. But now jobs are disappearing. Traditional jobs, we need not more inventors and innovators. So that kind of uh, innovators come from uh, identifying students' strength. It's not uh, everybody has some strength and. Uh, but schools typically not, do not pay attention to that, so we need to start a, a revolution to have a school that follows the child. It's provide a personalized education experience, teachers take a back seat. So our role is not to impose upon every student the same knowledge, same talent, but to, rather to say, I look at you, education is to create opportunities for every individual, not for the mass, not average. And that actually is, is the foundation of creativity. Creativity is very domain specific and individual specific. Creativity comes from a lot of confidence, but in our schools we actually do not encourage this confidence. We try to compare students to others uh, on standardized test scores, so most students feel they don't belong there, they do not have the confidence to come up with new ideas. Because in education, we're trying to prepare the average not extraordinary, but every child is extraordinary in their own way. So they should be challenged to create, to come up with new things. And another big point is that uh, it's this entrepreneurial thinking, is that in our schools, if we are in all our years, for 12 years, our students doing homework is like an employee. They're moving bricks from one place to another place. They're trying to fulfill the teacher's expectations. But entrepreneurs and creators don't do that. That's always stem from their own passion. However, their passion has to have value in real society. So then we need to teach our children how to identify problems worth solving, how their effort, their unique talent, their creativity can be of value to other people. That's why we need a pedagogical shift from the curriculum shift to personalized learning towards a pedagogical shift to product-oriented learning that enables our students to make authentic products to solve authentic problems. And the products can be anything, can be a piece of music, can be poetry, can be art, can be philosophy, also can be an engineering product. So let's not over prescribe that. That's like a STEM product or maker space, but anything you make that serves a genuine purpose is valuable. And that also demands our teachers to require our students to produce high quality products. Traditional project based learning focuses on use their project so students can learn some standards, acquire some content. But here, actually, the product is of value. Students need to learn to think about how they can improve the product, how it serves a purpose. It demands them to rethink. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. And finally, we live in a globalized society where our students need to rethink about where learning can occur. Traditionally, again, we make that happen in a classroom, confined by schools, by the four walls of building. But now today, our students can truly learn from anyone, anywhere, and for them as well. So our students need to think about develop global partners, global customers, and global neighbors for each other. So I think our campus needs to be expanded as a globalized campus. So that's really the three elements I talk about in a new world-class learners. It's called personalized education and giving students autonomy product oriented learning that focus on students improving the product and experiences and the context is shall be globalized campus through technology, through study abroad, through in, uh, integrating and identifying strength of our minority students, our immigrant students, we can recreate the whole thing. <laughs> so, how do we mount this revolution? We have uh, policy makers, we have uh, higher ed institutions that prepare our teachers and our school leaders. We have those of us in the field, you know, the professional development that's required. 
How do we do this? Where do we begin? Well, ironically, actually, Mary, uh, the revolution has to start as an evolution. We cannot just go overthrow a system, mm -hmm. and, but we have to be able to cultivate innovative practice somewhere. You know, in education, we seldom cultivate the next practice. We always have some policy making then based on the past coming down. I think, number one, every system, New Jersey or other places, should allow innovative educators to come up with new ideas, should be freed from those bondages of traditional like standards testing. You should allow people to innovate. That, that's one thing. I think uh, at the policy level, at least we should enable changes, mm -hmm. not try to make sure everybody is the same. We know it doesn't work you know, this way. The second thing, I think we should rely on students. We, we do not try to change everybody, but we should enable students, especially those students, those parents who are willing to try something new, we should make it available to them. And without forcing, again, changes on people. I don't like to force changes on anybody, but there are people who want to change. So we have teachers too, teachers, school leaders, and there'll be a small percentage of them are ready to change, ready to move. I've seen that happens. You don't change the whole thing. You change gradually from one place. But the most important thing is that in education, we need alternative models. You know, something that's different. Because right now, you know, all this... Uh, Charter schools, all this, whatever they're doing, they're not creating a real alternative in terms of paradigm. They're creating an alternative in terms of operation, mm -hmm. but they're still doing the same thing. They're still making sure students learn the same thing, progress at the same time. We need the educational models that's different. And once we create those schools, people will see them, that can change. I think our biggest concern, my biggest concern right now is we do not have an alternative paradigm emerging. It's like, you know, in, you know, when we're making cars, everybody was trying to make cars, but nobody's inventing on the computer chips. So now we need someone inventing something different. Do you see any small pockets of uh, change that are occurring in your travels around the world? Absolutely. I've seen a lot of small changes, school-based changes, mm -hmm. classroom-based changes. And, you know, some systems are, are, are shifting uh, the thinking as well. So I've seen very successful schools and trying this, so it's, it's, uh, it's not high in the sky, and actually not of the model I, I described. They, the ideas came from a lot of like, central old ideas. Mm -hmm. There are schools being done, being out there for doing this for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. you know, so, and, but the, the, the key is that, you know, we had a child-centered philosophy for a long time, but that was considered soft, because it truly go, went after child-centered. They may not become independent because they don't have the employment skills. So now the time has arrived, actually the time both demands and supports a child-centered education. So what do you see for our future? Is this going to happen? I, well, it has to happen. It's, I, I, I don't know when, but it has to happen because uh, America has uh, uh, fortunately always uh, had a great history of inventing itself, mm -hmm. or reinventing itself. We've gone through many different changes. We had a lot of, uh, let's say, timber and natural resource extraction. We gave that up. We became a manufacturing society. We gave that up. We went to more of a, a service kind of innovation economy. Mm -hmm. We've always done this, and I hope we can do it. But education, however, has not had to do, go through those changes. Education always changes slower. But we need someone to invent the future, not keep fixing the past. Well, I hope it happens soon in I our hope lifetime. So too. Thank you. But we really are glad that uh, we've had uh, his wisdom um, explained to us and expressed to us at this conference. So thanks very much. Thank you.